it was a very stupid um, situation actually. And I think we, we were really caught bang to rights. Um, because we were, uh, I said, these are all these permission. I'm trying to show you, we were in one of these unrecognized countries that I just talked about. It's a place called Transnistria. And it's a small country between Moldova and Ukraine, two other quite obscure countries. But this is the edge of Europe. I mean, this isn't, this isn't the back of beyond. And um, Russia still has this military base on in this country. There's lots of dodgy arms dealing and spies and all sorts of naughty, naughtiness going on. And we were trying to film this base. So we were, we were quite a long distance from it and we were walking towards it. And I was making a joke about it. Now this is where we get arrested. And lo and behold, in about a minute, there was a little flashing blue lights and then men in leather overcoats turned up and took us away. And um, the KGB isn't really from your lifetime, is it? It's more old folk like me. It's, it's from the Cold War. But they were the um, secret police. And they took us away to their cells and sat us down and ask questions in a very Russian way, which is basically not to move the lips while talking. So they say, what are you doing here? What do you want? What is No first words, no first Which is quite scary anyway. And we were in this unrecognized country. There's no British embassy we can call. Um, maybe he's going to come and rescue us. And it was quite frightening, but um, it wasn't the most frightening experience I've had um, because uh, we were in communicating with people, they weren't holding guns to our heads. But bizarre, actually, the way we got out was quite bizarre because I happened to mention to our local guy a couple of days before, on a long drive, that I was vaguely related, um, as my family's one claim to fame, vaguely related to Sir Christopher Wren, who had not, still did, because Christopher Wren built some balls of people, etc. And the Russians, are the, the, the people that were very impressed by this, because apparently they learned about him at school under, under the old Soviet Union. And they thought this may be some form of aristocracy. So we're being held in the cells at the KGB headquarters, and our guy turns up, and she says to the KGB boss, you, what are you doing? You must release this man. He's related to the Queen of England. Not in that accent. And, um, and they let us go. They gave me a KGB cat badge as a souvenir, and they released us. So, very lucky, really, that I've been shooting my big mouth off and talking about this. So that was how we got out. It wasn't the scariest, but I was quite scared. Um, and then leaving is the most difficult part of these journeys, because obviously I'm just going there for a short period of time, and I get to hear these people's stories. And then I leave them, and their life goes on. They go on with their suffering, and I come back to my cosy, happy life in, in the UK. Um, so in that respect, I find, you know, I find the, the journeys difficult, and that was a particularly frightening one. In Madagascar, um, they have some really weird customs. Um, because, as I said, as I just mentioned, Madagascar has been cut off for a long time. So they have, thing, they have a system called Fadi, which is essentially tribal beliefs, which in some parts of the island mean you can't wear red on a Tuesday, you can't use your, use your left hand on a Thursday. Um, and they have uh, beliefs that um, twins, for example, are very evil. Um, and they have this really gruesome one. I don't know if I can tell this, but I'll try. Um, where when somebody dies, they lay the body out on, on sticks, on a sort of funeral bed. And they let the juices from the body... Is it okay? Can I go around? Yeah. They let the juices from the body collect into a cup. And then every member of the family has to sit from the gun. <laughs> I thought I'll eat anything, but I'll draw the line. <laughs> took a month to make one program. So for one hour of telly, we have to travel as a team for a whole, a whole month. It takes a long time to film. Um, and the reason to do it, really, is because it's an amazing part of the world. Um, the Indian Ocean is the third biggest ocean, do correct me if I'm wrong, that's the third biggest ocean. And uh, I think there's been a lot of focus on the Atlantic and the Pacific in the past, but the Indian Ocean is becoming a real hub, a power hub, because uh, India and China are jostling for control of it, and there's pirates there, um, and there's lots of big important environmental issues um, that are affecting the area around the Indian Ocean and the sea itself, so that's where we're off to. We start soon, actually.
I'm very pleased to be nominated, but I never thought that I would win it. Um, it's a great award because it comes with this incredible inscription on it that I remember, off, I'm so pleased, I remember off the top of my head, it says, for, for an outstanding contribution to greater world understanding. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's not bad. I was, of course, I was, I was over the moon, absolutely over the moon. Um, I haven't really won anything in life. Um, uh, so I was very, 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 very pleased. Thank you for reminding me about that. <laughs> Um, Lola. Yeah, has got a really good question. That's Lola. She's gone. Okay. Has she gone? She's had to leave. Oh, she had to go to her trumpet lesson. Okay. Absolutely, of course. Um, I think part of, I think part of the thing about travel there, you've got to remember how lucky you, we all are. Um, the, your ability to travel now is unlike anything your ancestors could possibly have imagined. And I suspect it will be unlike anything your descendants will be able to do as well. I think things like the price of oil is going to go up. I think there'll be a resources squeeze. I think the global climate is going to change. And I think it'll be harder to, for your kids, your grandchildren to, to travel like you can. Um, I think you have a responsibility, forgive me for saying, to travel intelligently. So I think just going off and to Spain or Dubai and sitting by a pool with your iPod in is a crazy thing to do. You, and you've got to get out there, you've got to travel with your eyes open and learn about the places you're going to. You can contribute to the greater good of the planet, the greater good of the environment by going. There are wildlife reserves around the world that are entirely dependent on money from tourists to fund the conservation work they do. So by going there and paying your tourism money to fund that institution or that place, you're, you're helping to save species, you're helping to save endangered animals. So absolutely, travel is a fantastic thing, as long as you travel intelligently um, and you think about what you're doing and you realise it's, it's a great privilege as well. It's like with, what was the line in Spider-Man? With great power comes great responsibility. Um, well, I'll just finish off with Another question, actually, I'm going to quickly read it out, and that is, what advice would you give these guys to become better geographers? So you sort of consider that last question, I guess. Better geographers? I'm not really the right person to answer that, am I? You've got, well, you, you teachers are supposed to do that. I would say, um, listen. <laughs> um, like today. Like today. Well, you've been very good listening to me, thank you very much. Um, I would say, realise that it's part of, it's your responsibility as well to, um, to be a student, I mean, it can't, it can't just be the teachers filling you with information. You've got to take opportunities when they come up. I regret not going off to a trumpet lesson when I had the opportunity when I was a student. I think you've got to recognise that you don't go suddenly from being a youngster or a student to being an adult. You're basically adults now. And I realise that more than ever from travelling around the world. As I say, I see adults your age living adult lives, working, running families, um, being soldiers, fighting, looking after their families. Your, 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 your life won't suddenly change. and it, it will just progress and you need to take the opportunities when they arise now, not just imagine you're going to do it in the future. Um, and that applies to geography and everything. Yes, hello. Just quickly, I was wondering how you prevent yourself when you seem like It's really it's tough. Really to it is. It's really hard to walk away. Absolutely. Um, I think I'm able to because um, my jo I've got a job to do there. I'm there to uh, to film them and to convey what they're living, the conditions they're living in, back to other people here. With that example, for example, the, the one with um, Jahangir, who was a boy working in the glass factory. Um, UNICEF were desperate for us to film there because uh, it meant that they got more contributions and more donations to the charity, and they used it as an example, and they you know, asked me to give speeches about the conditions he lives in. So I think of that as being my responsibility. But there have been times when I've, you know, I've given all the money I've got in my pockets to people, even though I'm not supposed to and we're not meant to, because I can't bear the alternative. The alternative is you just 
you walk away and you abandon those people and leave them there in their situation. There wasn't a lot we could do for Jahangir other than we took, tried to arrange to get him out of the glass factory and into a school. But you know, we can't, we can't pick him up and bring him here and give him an amazing new life. So it's tough. I'm not going to deny it. But that's the reality in the world. We shouldn't shy away from it. and We shouldn't deny it when we're on holiday wherever we are. When you're in Moscow you're, or Cuba, you'll see poor people, you'll see kids begging on the streets, and, and you shouldn't close your eyes. Okay, I think we're going to have to wrap it up. Can I just, on behalf of everybody, say thanks very much? I think you guys made me say thank you. Thank you so much for coming and sitting here and listening to me natter away about my life. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm very touched. Thank you very much. It's quite an encounter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Wow. It's a heavy, something heavy. Thank you. Heavy hit generally means very. Thank you so much. And again, thank you to all of you guys for being such good audience. Thank you very much. I'm sure you'll agree with any questions. Very impressive questions, yeah. And obviously in the audience, yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.